Exterior, graveyard night. <clears throat> Mark and Maddie are horny teens, propped up against a gravestone, <laughs> thinking about, but not actually, kissing. That dance was lame. <laughs> Told you. I knew it was going to be lame, but Coach said the whole team had to go to homecoming. I can't believe I'm dating River Country High's first ever goth quarterback. <laughs> That's me. Mark, the goth quarterback. <laughs> uh, so, why do you like the graveyard so much? So nice. So quiet, so nice. I come here to think and run footwork drills. <laughs> the wind picks up and Maddie stares off into the distance. What's wrong, Sugar Plum? What the fuck? What the fuck is that? What the actual fuck? Maddie stands. Hey, Jill, it's probably just a grave guy. No, there's someone coming. Maddie runs off. Maddie! Maddie, wait! We didn't even Ouija yet. Mark turns to look where Maddie was looking. Hello? Hello? Anyone there? Silence. Guess I better pack everything up. Sounds of rustling and footsteps approaching at a fast pace. What the? Hey, stop! No, no, no! Sounds of Mark being devoured slash destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> I really want devoured. Mark the Goth quarterback to be the Aquins of this season. <laughs> Mark the Goth, first River That's Country me. High's first ever Goth quarterback. Mark the Goth quarterback. <laughs> we are getting close to making our short horror film, Close and Lock the Patio Door. In one week, you're going to hear us actually make our movie. Can you believe it? I can't. The script is written. The crew is being assembled. The location is locked in. But there is one thing we need to look at. Acting. Specifically, horror acting. We've written a handful of scenes like Goth Quarterback to test our abilities. As actors, we've all done our share of comedy and plenty of drama and even action. But horror is a different beast. Monster. Dracula. Horror is a different Dracula. Today on the show, can we let our fears come to the surface? How do we nail acting? The scary kind of acting. It's Let's Make a Horror. On previous seasons of the show, we've been writing these projects, but this time, we're doing everything, directing, producing, and acting. And today, we're focusing on acting. But that should come pretty easy to us. We're all actors, to varying degrees. Ryan has been making a living on TV and movies for most of his adult life. Maddie is primarily a stand-up comedian and writer, but she's booked a few roles. And as for me, I've traveled the world acting, performing at the Sydney Opera House, London's West End, but... The thing I'm most recognized for these days is a Pepto-Bismol commercial that will just not stop airing, where I express relief as my co-workers sing to me about nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, and, well, who can remember? It's nothing. Sounds like something. When you have nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, Oh, yeah, diarrhea. Now I remember. The point is, we're all actors. So this should be the part of the project with which we're the most comfortable. But here's the thing. When you're watching a movie, nobody notices if the director cuts too early or the screenwriter misspells a word. But if we suck on screen, you'll notice for sure. We don't have professional directors or producers making us look good. We just have each other. And that may not be enough. So let's try an acting exercise. We've written some short horror scenes, and now we're doing our best to portray the many sides of horror, such as fear, menace, and fear. Maddie, you volunteered to go first. Yes, and I'd love to cast mine with the two of you. I wrote it with you guys in mind. Okay. But um, who's taller? Ryan, for sure. Mm -hmm. you, how tall are you? Six even. And how tall are you? Four, two. <laughs> okay. So, Ryan, you will play taller guy, and I will do the stage uh, directions. Okay. And Mark, you will play guy. Okay. The purpose is to practice being scary as actors and also practice, see it's what a, it's like to write something. And it's have a writing scary. challenge and an acting challenge. Yeah. Right. Let's okay. see what we can do. 
Interior parking lot night. A guy walks to the only car in the parking garage. Suddenly, another taller guy appears. Excuse me? Ah. Do you have a light? Sorry, you scared me. I get that a lot. The first guy is creeped out. He realized the tall guy is growing? Uh, Well, have a good night. Oh, I will. He's way taller now. What the? Ah! (laughs) No, no, don't! He kills him. (laughs) Why? Why are you laughing? That was really scary. He got really tall and he killed him. Yes, the last line is he kills him. That's I just I love the way it ended. That. uh, (laughs) Yeah, I added some foley. That Mm -hmm. was odd. The keys. Wow. The keys were huge and the steps were huge. Great. I felt it. And the man was literally huge. Uh, so what Maddie's done, it's very simple. You mm-hmm. did it in four, five lines. <laughs> yeah. I uh, mean, one Remedy. of them says you literally, you scared me. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it gets right to the point. He yeah. scared him. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's on the page. I mean, if you, if this was, if this short was made, it would have a million views. It'd be fine. Because like if it was because there would be a guy growing taller that was mm. scary. But I don't you know? understand why, like he asked for a light. <laughs> and then that's never discussed again. It's just like, well, have a good night. I guess because he's scared of the guy. Yeah, he doesn't give him the so light. So I say, do you, <laughs> yeah. can, you, you can I have a light? Oh, sorry, you scared me. I get that a lot. Then have a good have night. Have a good which night. Is, which is, is kind of like, go away. Yeah, but yeah. he doesn't say no. Which is an interesting turn acting wise. Yeah. Like, this is done. This exchange is done. Like when Which you, is a brave thing to say to someone you're scared of. Yes. Mike, now you talked about your, do you want to move on to one of yours? Because you sure. referenced. I want to, I just, before we do this, I just want to say without a hint of a joke this was the hardest exercise that i've attempted for the all three seasons so far i I feel like uh horror films there's a lot there's a lot to see i don't think it's necessarily done with dialogue and just having dialogue without all the all the all the other stuff around it i I think is is is, is, without the scary context yeah Mm. yeah it's it's tough it's tough it's kind of like saying be be funny now totally Being scared is tough. For my scene, to try to sink into the scariness a bit more, we decided to remove the stage directions. We also read it a few times before recording it, but here's what you need to know about it. Two people are pulling up to a house to visit a friend, and they are coming up to the front door. Oh, hey, you two. Hi. Hey. <laughs> oh, oh is, is your brother not coming in? Or? No, no. Oh, he's not? No, his plane was delayed, so he's, he's not going to get in until like, later tonight. Oh, uh, I just assumed that was your brother. So who's in the car? Our car? There's nobody in our car. What? Yeah, yeah, there was. I assumed it was your brother. Mm, Maybe you just saw a reflection or something. No, it was a guy wearing a white jacket and a black hat. (laughs) I don't know what to tell you. No guy in the car. Marianne was in the front seat. Maybe you saw her? No. She didn't see me. She saw him. Who? Who? Who did I see? Him! Uh, the guy. <laughs> That's scary. Uh, yeah. I don't know if my delivery was scary, but it was a scary turn of events. Mm. The brother was a big, I don't know what was going on with the brother. His flight was, you know? Yeah, like why did yeah. why was that in there? No, no, but I was misdirected by the brother. I was right. worried about his flight. Right. But remember, like we uh, do, a lot of it is a misdirection. Yeah, yeah. Which is like, okay. Yeah, like sometimes someone this. just wants a light. And they grow taller and kill you. Yeah. <laughs> it's classic misdirection. <laughs> um, I just want to say that I, I I did try very hard my scene. No, Maddie's... No, I, that's what I no, said. No, but isn't that interesting, though? I, that I it's said, like, this, it's I said just, the same thing. It's, it is the hardest thing we've ever done. Yeah. This is the hardest thing we've ever done. I think we're learning about what it is to read off the page yeah. and to really, like, put but our But also when you guys were being there. scared, I was, I was like, whoa, you know? It's mm-hmm. really just acting. Uh, okay, let's move on. But I think that was great. Ryan? Let's do my more serious one. Lastly, Ryan scene. Interior living room night. Mark sits alone on a couch. He is munching on popcorn. His phone rings. Looking down, he sees it's an unknown number and silences it. Minutes pass. His phone rings again. Same number. He silences it again. It immediately rings again. Then again. Then again. Finally, he answers. Hello. Don't hang up. Who is this? Excuse me? Don't get scared. Whatever this is, just take my number off the list. Don't hang up. 
hang up. He, he hangs up, goes back, uh, goes back to his popcorn. The phone rings again. He answers. Stop calling me. Don't hang he up. He hangs up. It immediately starts to ring again. Almost as soon as he pushes the disconnect button, he lets it ring. It keeps ringing. It doesn't go to voicemail. It keeps ringing. He puts it down on the couch, but it doesn't stop. Finally, he picks it up again. I'm calling the police. Don't hang up. Who are you? What do you want? I'm trying to help you. Mark. Music. Mark stands up. I'm calling the cops and blocking your number. Don't hang up. He hangs up and dials 911. Yeah. Hi. Um, uh, I don't really know. I'm being harassed. A, a, a number I don't recognize keeps calling me and saying, like, cryptic, cryptic things. Like, n- nothing too bad, but they keep calling and they won't stop. Silence. Hello? It sounds like they're just trying to help you, Mark. Oh, my God. The doorbell rings. Good. I like that he called 911 and it, it yeah. was the same person. The same voice. That was very good twist. Yes. Just good... trying the calls coming from inside your house. Phone sure. vibe, yeah. you know. I like that the 911 answered yes. Yes. Well, exactly. Yeah. That's kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it that is was interesting really insane. how it's always like, I just want acting notes, not like, yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it just seems like it completely changes based on the performance more than other things. Yes. Yeah, totally. Changing on the words. Like, rom com, it felt like changing the words was changing. The performance. Right. But there's this is like you could totally do anything. If I'd been like, don't hang up, that would have mm-hmm. been such a different scene. Completely. Yeah. A different monster. Like, yeah. Don't hang up. Yeah. Don't and with sci fi, there's so much, <laughs> there's so much like plot that you have to discuss and right. talk about. Right. And like, don't hang up because your water does need to be yeah. used for drinking water. <laughs> Don't hang up because we have to process the beans and throw out the bean trash. Don't hang up. There's a lot of radiation in Who's space. Who's calling who in this situation? <laughs> you know, I don't know if I believed we were going to be able to take this exercise seriously, but in the end, we actually learned a lot. Well, my reflection is this is a bit inside the actor's studio, mm-hmm. but of course, when I am acting and in my head, someone starts saying, "You're so bad at acting. Yeah. This is so bad." We oh, know the same listen guy. to the way that you just said that line. That mm-hmm. wasn't scary at all. Of course, it starts to get worse. Yeah, interesting. So it's uh, you gotta like when it's the... vulnerable to pretend to be scary. Oh. It's weird. Yeah, it's strange. It's and like it... pretending to be in love, or it's like it's a grand emotion that we all if, uh, feel differently. Pretending to be scared is going to be very... Or scary. Scary and scared. It's like, it's embarrassing. Yeah, (laughs) I'm a big, strong guy, monster guy. (laughs) Yeah. We have our work work cut out for us, don't we? Like we all said, this was for sure the hardest exercise we've done in the three seasons of this show. (sighs) I think we need to talk to someone who is a little bit better at this than us. Hi, I'm Rose. I am an actor from New Zealand. That's Rose McIver. She starred on the TV show iZombie for five seasons, where she played a medical examiner who happened to also be a zombie. She also stars on the spooky sitcom Ghosts, but one of her most notable credits is the Peter Jackson horror film, The Lovely Bones. When you do you do when you have to act scared because I've had to act scared before. Do you think of scary things or do you like technically be like this is what a scared person exhibits in certain <laughs> situations? Do you know what I, I remember. Mean? Like, do you know what's funny? I remember I thought I was just doing the work and was like, oh, you know, you don't think of, you don't want the vanity of thinking about your face or like anything. And when I was filming The Lovely Bones, which was definitely you know. Horror elements. It was a film that Peter Jackson made in New Zealand. I don't know if people don't know. It's about um, a girl who's like assaulted and murdered, and, and her family and how they cope. And it's very, very, very sad. Mm-hmm. And so I was trying to like really get lost in the emotion of this. I've just had this panic kind of run, and I think I've survived the running away from the killer. And I've landed on my back, and I was lying there, and I just heard this like cut. And I was like, oh, I thought I killed that. What's going on? It was like middle of the thing. And he was like, can, can we do another one where you're not flaring your nostrils quite so much? Oh. And I was like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Good, good. Yeah. Like someone's got to say it. Like it's going to be distracting in the final cut if I'm like just sort of prof- prof- sort of profusely um, wow. flaring my nostrils. But it can be a bit of a juggle because, yeah. um, you know, it's like people who blink all the time. You don't want to be thinking about 
any of that. And you shouldn't be, but you do need a director or somebody to intervene at a certain point and be like, this is going to distract the audience. This is what it looks like. This is what's happening at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. That is a judgment match. So be careful. That's my big um, cautionary tale is just watch out for the nose flaring on any close-ups when you're doing like (laughs) panicked, panicked breathing. (laughs) <laughs> do you have any tricks for how to do panic breathing without flaring your nostrils? Just really drop your jaw. Like, really. <laughs> yeah, panting. <laughs> Cinema. <laughs> panting. You, uh, you worked with Stanley Tucci on that, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what was that like? You know, that was such a special project with really special people involved. And Stanley Tucci, who plays the murderer, um, mm-hmm. he came out recently saying, how hard he found that job and how incredibly upsetting it was to take that home every night. And, you know, it was a long shoot. I think it was six months or something. We did three months in the States and three months in New Zealand. And um, he was just so incredibly generous because I was 19 at the time. And, you know, he had scary scenes with other people as well. I can only speak to what, what I had going on, which was just he made such an effort in between to um, – break the illusion in a way that I think is healthy for, you know, it's, I I get when people have to stay committed and present, but if you're doing that on and on and on, and it was my first time working overseas, it just could have easily been a very overwhelming and intimidating and terrifying experience. And um, he was incredibly generous. You've had to be scary too, right? Like, like you need to be intimidating in some of the roles you play. Like what, like, and how do you, how does that work? I don't know that I'm great at that. And I really want to be like, I want so badly when people say, what role are you most wanting to play? I'm like a villain. Like I want to be a villain Mm -hmm. and don't get me wrong. It's like, not that I don't have awful qualities and could be just, you know, really (laughs) manipulative and and sinister. It's, it's just something about my face, like my baby face, round cheeks doesn't seem to kind of elicit fear. And I have to work on that because that's, yeah, I, I I think I find it quite hard to be um, to play intimidating mm-hmm. and and kind of feel much ownership behind it. I just feel a bit silly. I've got a self consciousness about that. I think totally because acting is embarrassing. Acting is like that. It's I always so say it's embarrassing, and that's what you have to get over. Like every part, yeah. it's like this is in, I'm in front of other adults yeah. pretending to be this guy who doesn't <laughs> yeah. exist. I okay. so agree, Ryan. No sure. one talks about that enough. Like it's embarrassing. I also think that about actually being funny sometimes. I'm like in comedy, I always try as a human, I try to like soften my own jokes and like smile and like sm- laugh a lot at what other people say. And like it's all the stuff that makes you not very funny because it's not really dry. And um, I think like, I mean, especially something like stand up where people have to sort of, it's such a um, earnest performance you're giving or like a, I don't know, I, I feel like as soon as I'm Rose, I'm like, oh, like who? It's can't, can't kind of. <laughs> Hold the hold that that like tension towards yes. that you need to for comedy. Mm-hmm. I'd be a terrible stand up. If if I well, I'm sure you'd be great. Um, I think you'd probably be quite a good stand up. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah. you oh, have, a, you have to, yeah. <laughs> through everything. Yeah. Everyone be like, she thinks she's hilarious. What's she doing? Get off. Get out. <laughs> Rose, if you uh, if you got your dream villain job, what mm. what would it be? Mm-hmm. And just assuming that you could nail any. Any like type of thing that you would play, what well, would your what would your I, villain be? I don't get like deeply humiliated often. I, I get embarrassed and think acting is silly and stuff. But I don't, for some reason, saying this sounds just like I feel tragic. I'm like it's so far from something that I could ever <laughs> actually do. But like the Kate Blanchett in Thor, like I can't do it. And I'm, I'm laughing at myself. I'm hating myself right now for thinking like, it's just, I would look so silly. I would look so with the sort of, I don't have cheekbones. I don't have any of that. Like you've got to look sort of menacing and like severe. And I don't, I, I think I'd have to play like the weird little decoy, like, Oh, the red herring. Nobody saw, you know, it was going to be her. I don't know. Something like that. It's probably a bit more. Mad. So it is, it is then, this is very obvious, but it is about a look. You think like you kind of, if you're going to nail some role, especially like in a scary scenario or like you have to, you have to look a certain way. You have to have a certain um, look about you. I think there's like, it doesn't have to be one particular quality, but I think if you're not tall, if you're not um, kind of shrewd looking or like really like, if you've got that kind of like little cunning thing, 
if you, you, there's got to be like it can it, it isn't like there's one look for a villain, mm-hmm. but there's like five prototype looks that I don't mm-hmm. fit into right. any of the buckets. That's what I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What are, do you have any some specific things that scare you? Like for me, I'm a real like lights are off. What's in the house? What's that noise? Kind of mm-hmm. scare. Like, do you have any like specific mm-hmm. rose scares that always get you? Well, on a genuine, awful kind of earnest note, OCD is like fear of the unknown so like to me um there's been a lot of like uh what if i've said so you know it'll be really totally. irrational it's very irrational but it'll yeah. be like mm-hmm. what if i've said something and i've hurt that person's feelings and yes. ultimately then they're going to tell 400 that's the thing that will keep me awake at night yes. by far um so then kind of anything that's sort of adjacent to that like if i see it on screen if uh a really like a moment of somebody being humiliated yeah do you know i've Am I allowed to talk shit about a show? Sure. It's everybody's favorite show. And I, I love, I, I think it's like really well made. I'm not trying to, but Jury Duty, that new series, mm-hmm. I, I just, I have such a visceral response to him not knowing what is happening, I even see. though he's like on board and I, I you know, he sounds mm. great and like I'm sure, sure he's had a great experience. But my like terror about, oh my gosh, he doesn't know what's mm-hmm. happening and he's yeah. not in on the joke. That does something to my brain. Totally. Yeah. Well, that's a great point. Like watching, I, I'm uncomfortable with watching uh, somebody be pranked or mm. punked or whatever. Yeah. Like I, I always feel. Oh, do pranking and, and punking. I'm never comfortable like it's very, watching. Like, it's, yeah. Yeah, it's unnerving I'm not a prankster. Sure. Yeah. I'm not a prankster yeah. at all. Like Because it's just a I lie. Just, yeah. <laughs> it's just lying. I, I've, done, I've done soft pranks. I one time gave my wife uh, uh, a, a piece of cheese instead of a piece of soap. And I, because she, <laughs> and it was what? the funniest thing that I've ever seen. No. We were at a hotel oh, cute. and she was like, can you grab that soap off the thing and give it to me? She was in the shower and I thinking so fast, I cut a piece of cheddar cheese and I pretended thing. and I pretended to take it out of the wrapper and I gave it to her and she started washing with it. And then I was dying laughing so hard. And I had to leave the room. And then she, she was like, it's not sudsing. And then like, we're just kind of like, and then she smelled it and was like, it smells like cheese. <laughs> For some reason, I'm absolutely fine with this. Oh, I God, too. it killed I mean, me. I'm still laughing. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So we got off topic there for a bit, but we brought things back with an all new Let's Make a Horror trademark game we're calling Rom-Com Lines as Horror Lines. The premise is simple. We've pulled famous dialogue from romantic comedy movies, and it is our job to perform them like they would in a horror movie. It's the ultimate acting test. And can you be can you be the scary person or the scary in these yeah. scenarios? How does it, what's, what's, yeah, with the rules. Well, I think that that'll, that'll be up to who sets it up. So I'll, I'll set this one up. Okay. Okay, Ryan, your yes. character has just been mortally wounded by somebody. And you are in a basement and you're bleeding out. And this is what you say to the killer. I wanted it to be you. I wanted it to be you so badly. <laughs> And that was from You've Got Mail. Okay, great job, Ryan. Very erotic. Right. Yeah, it was, was pretty erotic. erotic. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. No, that was great, Ryan. Yeah, thank I mean, you very much, Rose. I yeah, appreciate that. Good. Yeah. No, but it was too, maybe too erotic. So that's something to think Erotic about. horror. Yeah. It's a genre. Yeah. So, Ryan, why don't you set this one up um, for, uh, okay. for Maddie? Oh, God. Uh, uh, let's say uh, you're at the door and there's a team of zombies trying to get through the door and you're holding the door and you're screaming this <laughs> at the zombies. <laughs> <laughs> and you're about to okay. open the door and shoot them with a shotgun. Okay. It seems to me the love is everywhere. Often it's not particularly dignified or newsworthy, but it's always there if you look for it. <laughs> I've got a sneaky feeling that love is actually all around. Oh, that's good. That's really good. good. I can see really? that. Wow. You kick the that door was, open, you get those intense. guys. 
I really thought you were going to be killed by someone. Yeah, I was <laughs> on edge. <laughs> okay, Maddie, you set it up for Rose. Okay, Rose, um, this this boy is about to eat this girl's hand in front oh. of her. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And he says this. Okay. Uh, wait, no, I say that. And you're the boy. So you're, you're, the, the, boy. you're the boy. Oh, very <laughs> complex. <laughs> Liars, yeah. Yeah, it's very uh, complex. <laughs> Don't forget, I'm also just a girl standing in front of a boy asking him to love her. Yeah! Wow! <laughs> that was really good. That was really good. Witchy. Okay. It was witchy. All right. Now, uh, Rose, you uh, you set me up with this one. Um, you know that thing you did when you were a kid and you sat on someone and did a typewriter on their chest? Um, sure. <laughs> it was sort of a... <laughs> yeah, I think that's a ubiquitous... <laughs> It's heard. called typewriter chest. Yeah, of course. Does anyone know that? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> it's no. It's like you've pinned somebody down in a wrestling match or something. Oh, it's like, like and you go. Yeah. Do you hit their head like it's the uh, <laughs> like it's the paper tray? <laughs> if you've got a lot of panache, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So you are doing a typewriter to somebody who. <laughs> You sprung hiding behind your door <laughs> when you got home thinking you had an empty apartment. Okay. <clears throat> I came here tonight because when you realize you want to spend the rest of your life with somebody, you want the rest of your life to start as soon as possible. Ding. <laughs> good. That good. Was good. Very good. And fun, Mark. That was good. Okay. Good. That Great. was good. Great. Mark, do you have another one for Rose? Yeah. Yeah. You go, Mark. Someone. You got. You got a team. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, Rose, you, you are, uh, you've tied somebody up mm-hmm. and you're driving really fast in a car and they're in the passenger seat and we don't know if you're going to drive off a cliff. We don't know if you're going to drive into a wall and you say this. <laughs> I hate the way you talk to me and the way you cut your hair. I hate the way you drive my car. I hate it when you stare. I hate your big, dumb combat boots and the way you read my mind. I hate you so much that it makes me sick. Yeah! Yeah! Wow! What a supportive the audience. Car. Yes, that's mm-hmm. what we are. We're very mm-hmm. collaborative. Just thinking like that, you know, the Joker was my inspiration. Yes. On that one. Yeah. Do you think you could play the Joker? No. I do. No? Not enough cheekbone? Not I enough. think you well, could. <laughs> no, but he, he, did, he does have that great smile that sort of masks whatever's going on there, so maybe I'd be. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that's it for our little Rose. game. Great and I game. Thank you, you so did, much. I think you did really well. Um, yeah. You won the game. You guys are so great. I'm so excited for your um, movie. Okay, so I think we all sort of came to the same conclusion. Acting is embarrassing. It's enough to give you nausea, heartburn, indigestion, upset stomach, diarrhea. But the sooner we accept that, the more fun we'll have and the better we'll perform. And it helps that we have a pretty supportive crew. And speaking of our crew, next time we are assembling a crew, hopping in a car, driving to a secluded cabin, and shooting our horror film, Close and Lock the Patio Door. We're taking everything we learned about writing, acting, and directing, and we're putting it to use. And hopefully... Nothing goes wrong. Our DP, Joe, ended up going to the hospital yesterday with some very intense back pain. So he uh, will not be joining this weekend. Okay, well, hopefully only that one thing goes wrong. My retina detached. I had surgery. And um, I have gone temporarily blind in my right eye. Okay, well, hopefully only those two things go wrong. Like, if we don't have the contacts, we don't really have a monster. Yeah, well, what do you want me to do? Not put it in some more? The movie's the screwed. We're screwed. The movie's screwed. That's next time on Let's Make a Horror. Let's Make a Horror is a production of CBC Podcasts and Kelly and Kelly. Created by Kelly and Kelly. Hosted by Ryan Beal, Mark Chavez, and Maddie Kelly. This episode was written and produced by Dave Shumka and Chris Kelly. For Kelly and Kelly, the executive producers are Lauren Berkovich and Pat Kelly. Associate producer, Rebecca Peng. For CBC, Anna Ashite is the coordinating producer. Jeff Turner is the senior producer. The executive producer is Chris Oak. And RF Narani is the director of CBC Podcasts. Our theme song is by Chris Kelly. Come 
Cosmo! Cosmo! Ah! <sighs> 